I can't believe you are with me. You're not gonna believe where I'm at. This is like holy ground. You have been asking me to do this episode for so long and I am finally here. I am at the studio where Bob Ross, that's right, Bob Ross, filmed the joy of painting for years. And it's in Muncie, Indiana, which some of you may not have even known that. We are gonna go inside and get to see some of Bob Ross' original paintings. Not only that, but the studio space where he actually filmed this. I cannot wait to get inside. Follow me. Bob Ross experience. Yeah, well, the first thing, which I have to admit, I feel a little ignorant about, is that yeah. I went to Ball State, um, been okay. in Muncie, lot, and had no idea, one, that he, I mean, I knew he filmed in Indiana, but I had no idea he filmed in a house. Tell me about how in the world does he end up in this really gorgeous house <laughs> filming The Joy of Painting? Because it was a PBS station, so Bob was an artist and an educator, first and foremost, so he was traveling around teaching classes. He had one scheduled here, here in Muncie. He participated in mm. something that WIPV was doing that was a little bit special. There were a handful of PBS stations testing the idea of running advertisements mm. on public okay. television okay. at the time. So Bob bought an ad. And I mean, honestly, his classes, like he had people that attended, but they, they did not sell out. This one sold out. It really? oversold. So, he and his business partner literally just came down the street from where they were teaching the class, showed up at WIPV and said, we want to talk to the person in charge. The general manager came out, Jim Needham, and they said, Jim, what's so special about this place? How did yeah, we yeah, sell yeah. out our class? And he said, place is special. Muncie's special, the people here care, and WIPV cares about good quality production. And honestly, that was just a little door that opened, and Man. Bob said, I'd love to talk to you about an idea I've had. Can we go to lunch? They went to lunch, they sketched out some plans of, you know, well, WIPV, how would you like to do an art show? And they came up with an idea, they talked through the logistics, and you're kind of rolling from there. Man, the rest is history. Well, one of the things I absolutely love that you, the way you reference him, mm -hmm. and not first painter, but educator. For him, it was all about teaching. He wanted to inspire people with the idea of fearless creativity. His way of doing that was through painting. Yeah, yeah. Just getting people a little out of their comfort zone. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. So this is where the magic happened. I'll admit, I've watched tons of Bob Ross and being from PBS, you're like, when you told me that, no, we literally have this setup in the room mm -hmm. with the stuff that he actually used, it's kind of like you go to some former artist's space and you're like, I feel yeah. what it's like to stand in the same location that they were making their work, which is pretty wild. Yeah. Everyone usually is so used to seeing this much of Bob on the show, yeah. but what the heck was happening right, out here? Right, right. This is what was happening out here. Yeah, from the other standpoint, I always tell people like he was a genius because the show was so simple. I mean, he had, what, two cameras. This is mm -hmm. not rocket. And Bob. And Bob. And that's it. <laughs> this is Bob's easel. So this was one of his. He had a couple of easels. What's really cool about these is he made these himself. Oh, really? Yeah, it's an old uh, step ladder. Okay, I will admit, I've got all kinds of Bob Ross stuff in my treehouse where uh -huh. I work, and I've got this, and I always look at it wondering like, you can't buy that. Like, what is that? So he built this. It's actually pretty smart. Yeah, it really was. I, when I've been to Jackson Pollock's former mm -hmm. studio, and they've got some of his like paints and his brushes he used. So like, this is pretty wild. These are his brushes that he used. Here's what's so cool about Bob. I mean, you got okay, so you got to tell us more because you mentioned it out there mm -hmm. that you look at this painting, which this is a real, <laughs> this is an original Bob Ross we're yeah. looking at here. There's something like I think a misconception that people think like, well, it's just this simple landscape stuff, and I don't like Bob's work. And I'm like, <laughs> why did he use a limited palette? And then tell me more mm -hmm. about like how much, how much time did he take? to paint these. It is really easy to say, oh, they're so simple, because they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned he uses a limited palette. That yeah. is because he wanted to make it accessible mm. for the viewer. So okay. he always used a limited palette, the same one, so that if people had bought paints, they would always have them to be able to paint along or try it later if they wanted. He also kept the compositions really basic and simple on purpose. Yeah. Because he didn't want his viewers to feel frustrated, like they couldn't accomplish something. The other thing is, is he had 27 minutes to do one of these. They would film these live to tape. So it was literally 
Bob would start, Bob would paint for 27 minutes, and that was it. There was no editing, there was not taking extra shots. He did not have like magic extra time built in. Yeah. So also needs to be pretty basic because the guy had to get it <laughs> finished up in 27 minutes. <laughs> But he's like pumping these things yeah. out like so fast. That is really difficult. He would prep himself for that. Okay. So he always had a reference painting in the studio. Um, sometimes it would hang over there where you're seeing one there. Oh, okay. Sometimes it sat on a second little easel. Sometimes it was just leaning over there, but there was always one around. You can occasionally catch a glimpse of him during when he's on camera, kind of looking over somewhere because oh. he's checking his reference painting. And so he used that as his roadmap. All right. I think it's time we had some fun. Fun now. And he was also getting time counts you know, oh with gosh. time cards coming up throughout the filming so he would know where he was wow. and knew what he maybe needed to leave out if he had time to add wow. something. I really love hearing that like he had a reference. I mean, mm -hmm. the artist in me is like, I'm not one that could just make it up. And I yeah. mean, if you watch his stuff and you think, like I guess unless you're catching it, you think, oh, he's, everything's original. Oh, he's yeah. just like making this he, stuff up. He looks so much like he's yeah. just doing it. But no, he was very thought through. He came in knowing what all 13 paintings for each season were going to be. Like, okay, so tell me, so would he come up from Florida mm -hmm. and he would he take like months and film mm. a few? How did he how did he run the show? He would come up three or four times a year. Okay. Each time he came up, they would film an entire season. Oh my gosh. So 13 episodes in one week. In a week? And by a week, I really mean a couple of days. He would <laughs> he would roll in on the weekend. He would come in on Sunday night when he could have the space to himself. He would get his easel set up, get his paint set up to be ready to go Monday morning. He'd come in on Monday. They would film all of the opens and closes. Titanium white, phthalo green, phthalo blue. And until then, from all of us here, we'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting and God bless. I see you also have here. This is one of his palettes. palettes yeah. Yeah, this is this is one of Bob's palettes. Still has paint on it from the last Man, time he awesome. painted using it. And this one we know is one of Bob's personally because Bob's were custom made to a custom this, size. Yeah, you can tell. I always wondered that. Like they're so big. That's exactly what okay. was going on. They were custom made to be oversized for Bob. Okay. So when he was, if they were filming, there was plenty of room for him to do mixing and for the camera yeah, to yeah, get yeah. in there. So you've got here, by the way, so you've got a couple of his original paintings. Mm -hmm. This is just like random stuff he had laying around or tell so me about these So these, these all tie in in to stories and memories that relate to Bob. You're gonna find over here a little cup of iced tea. Bob's favorite drink was iced tea. And okay, he, okay. that's what he always had. And in between breaks, you know, on filming, he and the crew would sit out on the front steps in front of the house and drink iced tea. You'll find a little <laughs> a little jar of Vicks VapoRub. He would he would prep himself for filming by getting his getting his hair right, making sure, sure his shirt was right, and then also taking a sniff of Vicks to clear out his sinuses. Let's <sighs> paint. Is this a picture of like the crew and yes. him? Even with our show, a lot of people assume, oh, you must have like 10 or 12 people that come with you. And I'm like, no, there's like two to three. Right, typically. yeah, no, like, no, it's a small crew. Yeah, yeah, like same thing with him. I mean, it just didn't require much. I, okay, so that's another thing people ask me. They're like, where are all these paintings? So a lot of them are owned by Bob Ross Incorporated. We have 27 in our collection here. The other couple of buckets are out in private hands. So you don't see them show oh. up on the market a lot to buy, but they exist in private homes. We headed to the house right next door to a new exhibit featuring these privately owned Bob Ross paintings I had to check out. So what does this exhibit have then? Yeah, so this exhibit is a temporary art show and it's called Bob Ross at Home. This shows off a lot of those paintings that are, you know, were given to people by Bob who were friends or someone who might have purchased a painting from Bob at the Muncie Mall where he oh was demoing. God, Mall. It's just so cool that like, if you were around here in Muncie for all the Bob Ross fans out there, like you could have literally gone up to him and bought one at the mall or maybe you would have seen him and talked yeah. to him and he would have been like, hey, like, I got a painting for you. I mean, yeah, he was a nice guy. He's really just trying to show a simple technique. 
the, the, the way he can make a mountain look real, and I mean, when he's doing it in 20-some minutes, it's kind of crazy. It like, is, it is. And his tricks, like you said, you can just tell the back of this canvas is so dark, and it's just minuscule, like, there's not that much paint actually on this canvas. No, but. no, that's the thing, he actually, put very, very thin layers. And actually, if you look at his paintings over time, there's actually one over in the other room I'll show you that okay. it's a lot thicker application where he's putting layers oh. on in a thicker way that looks more like traditional oil painting. And the more he painted, the better he got at doing more with a lot less paint. Yeah. And it just got thinner and thinner with what he was doing. Oh yeah, I mean, the master of the quick painting. Oh, I absolutely. Mean, come on, he could just make it look so simple. <laughs> Okay. So, in this photograph here, you see Bob standing up on a stage painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he's got this composition, this canvas on his easel. That's the painting. Okay, so that's... So that is right. literally the painting, the canvas that he is painting in this photograph. And then right here in the middle, you'll see this young man in the sweatshirt. Yeah, yeah. And he's busily following along with Bob, painting right. his own version. That's Chris Taylor. This is Chris's canvas that he painted that day. This was here in Muncie. Okay. At the Greater Muncie Habitat for Humanity in the early 1990s. And Bob was generally into helping out. And he huh. very much cared about the community of Muncie. So when there was an opportunity to get involved in something, he did. Now we head back over to Bob's former studio. If we head over this way. You're walking into a 1980s living room to really see what Bob's fans were experiencing at home oh, yeah, okay. when, he, when he came to them through the television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have that great oh, I know. console television. Yeah, yeah. You can watch an episode of the show on there. It feels like I'm like on the Stranger Things set. But, a little bit. You know? Yeah, totally in this <laughs> moment. We got to talk about this because I think this is what is so fascinating about his show beyond just like what mm -hmm. he did. It's all the products that have yes. like spawned from his popularity like wh why do you think that even is or what, what started that you know i mean when he was living he he obviously was putting his name and his image on his products yeah yeah but then you know since his passing we've seen him really explode in popularity right he's always been running and on view on pbs that has never stopped you know the way that we consume media change so you can find him on youtube people that utilize Twitch. I don't know, they discovered Bob. So this kind of Bob is the pop icon of Bob on the toaster and yeah, Bob on the toaster. Chia head head yeah. kind of plays into that of people just love having these things around. They It makes them smile. Mm -hmm. I, you can't and Bob. I mean, this is Bob. Yeah. Bob wanted to make people smile. This is your world. You're the creator. Find freedom on this canvas. Well, Jessica, uh, we have to end in here, right? Like absorbing a Bob Ross episode, because I don't know about you, I'm kind of motivated now to go paint something after all the time you've spent. Just thank you so much for all your knowledge on Bob Ross. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming by. Oh yeah, heck yeah, I'm coming back for the painting class. Please do. <laughs> all right. You can go on and on and on, back and forth, back and forth, and forth, layer after layer after layer.